Good afternoon. My name is Michael York. I'm the New Hampshire State Librarian and a member of the Department of Natural and Cultural Resources, formerly the Department of, Natural, uh, of Cultural Resources. I want to thank you all for coming today to help us with this important task. The Department of Cultural Affairs was formed more than 30 years ago. Ben always said that it was he who got affairs out of government when he pushed to have the name changed to the Department of Cultural Resources. He believed that cultural resources were the cor correct way to describe our role. He saw the 234 public libraries and the many, many organiz uh, organizations and historic sites and New Hampshire's artists, musicians, actors as assets, resources to be cultivated to help and on occasion manage. He saw the creative economy as a vital part of New Hampshire. He worked with six governors and countless legislators to make sure that they understood what cult what, why culture is important. It's a good day for the Department of Natural and Cultural Resources because we are rec recognizing an iconic leader, Van McClad, for his 24 years of dedicated service to the people of his native state. At this time, I'd like to introduce Beth Muzzy, who is the State Historic Preservation Officer and a tenant in this building, actually, uh, who will tell us about the long-term history of this structure. Beth? Good afternoon. If we were to go back in time about a hundred years ago, where we're all standing and sitting would have been pasture at the edge of Concord South End neighborhood. On the corner next door was a large brick Victorian hospital called the Margaret Pillsbury Memorial Hospital, built in 1891. By the 1920s, it was becoming a little old fashioned with large open wards lined with cots to care for the sick and the injured. Expectations were changing more people were coming to the hospital when they were sick and they were beginning to expect better accommodations. This building opened in 1928 as an annex to the Pillsbury Hospital with one floor of private rooms for the sick and injured and one floor for new mothers and their babies. In 1945, one of those babies was Van McLeod. Van loved to tell the story of his birth. A lot of you have probably already heard it. <laughs> I'll spare you some of the details that I have heard, uh, but you should know that Van was born quickly, in the hallway, in an area curtained off for his mother before she could be admitted to a room of her own. Even as a baby, Van was ready to go and not too concerned with being conventional. A few years later, the Pillsbury Hospital merged with another hospital in town and became the Concord Hospital and moved away. In the 1950s, this was a doctor's office known as the Concord Clinic, and then in the 1970s, the state of New Hampshire bought it for office space. The building re-entered Van's orbit when he was appointed Commissioner of the Department of Cultural Resources in 1992. One of his divisions, my division, Historical Resources, had recently moved in along with the New Hampshire Humanities Council. 20 years later, Van consolidated much of his department, Historical Resources, the State Council on the Arts, Curatorial Service, and the Division of Film and Digital Media here at 19 Pillsbury Street. We tried to rename the building DCR South at that time but everyone in state government continued to call it old labor, sort of ironically, <laughs> because the Department of Labor had been here in the 1980s. Van often came to visit DCR South, and throughout the years, he sometimes had his office here. Our natural inclination when the commissioner visited was to look sharp and try to look busy. <laughs> but more often than not, Van wanted to talk. He wanted to know how we were doing, what we were doing, and how our families were, often remembering a small detail, 
a parent who had been sick, a child who was applying for college or played sports. Like you, we miss Van. And I know that I speak for everyone at 19 Pillsbury when I say how honored we will be to work in the building that will bear his name. I also want to let you know that in preparation for the naming, we're also doing some re-landscaping here in front of the building. We want to showcase a large granite sign that will have Van's name, as well as a sculpture by one of his good friends that will be on this side of the building. This work is only partly completed and it's due to finish this fall. But I do want to, uh, in particular, thank the staff of administrative services for working very hard to bring it, the project to the point it is in time for our ceremony today. Thank you very much. It is now my honor to introduce Representative Steve Shirtliff, who was a prime sponsor of the bill that names this building for Van McLeod. Commissioner McLeod had a very special relationship with Representative Shirtliff, Shirtliff, especially in the last three years, as they worked together closely to raise funds and erect a statue and create a suitable plaza for the John Gilbert Winan statue that sits out in front of the State Library. Representative Shirtliff. Thank you, Michael. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everybody. It's so nice to see so many of Van's friends here today, and his wife Joan, and his daughter Chelsea, and His Excellency our Governor Chris Inunu, and our State Senator. Um, you know, I think back on Van, and, I, and I'm so glad to see so many people who work at the Division of Cultural Resources with us today. In some respects, that was just as much Van's family, and he had so much pride and joy in the work that they did. And over these past few years, they've almost become my second family with the work we've done on the Wine and Memorial. It's hard to believe that it was a year ago today that Van passed away. But as I stand here today, I don't lament the passing of a good friend. Instead, I rejoice in the joy and knowing that he touched my life and because of that I'm a better person for it. We're going to dedicate this building today to the name and the memory of Van McLeod as a reminder to all of us how much he did for us and how much he did for the people in New Hampshire. But also to remind those that come after us the legacy that he leaves in dedicated service. If you visit the memorial to Governor John Winant on the grounds of the New Hampshire State Library, you see the beautiful sculpture to the governor. But next to it is a small plaque on which Van's name is mentioned. And it, said, it says he was the heart and the soul of the Winant Memorial Project. I think it was close to four and a half years we worked on that project. It was a long road and at times a bumpy one. But it was Van that gave us the momentum and the spirit and the enthusiasm. Everything was always positive and upbeat and tomorrow would be a better day. And we accomplished our mission. And a lot of that, in fact most of that, was because of the work of Van McLeod. I'm very honored to be here today. I'm very honored to be a sponsor of the bill that names this building in Van's honor, and I thank all of you for being here. God bless New Hampshire. We also have with us today uh, Senator Feltis, who represents uh, Senate District 15 in Concord, um, who is also a prime sponsor of the building. Thanks. Well, thank you very much for inviting me to participate in the celebration today and the signing. It's great to be here with the governor, Representative Shirtliff, Joan, Chelsea, and so many great friends of Van and what appears to be all of state government. <laughs> it's great to see so many great people here. I was talking with uh, Michael last week and he said, you know, um, it's not too often a piece of legislation naming a state building gets through on the first 
try, and I'd like to think that it's for brilliant legislating, although that's oxymoronic in its very terms. Uh, <laughs> it was because a van. And you know, Steve put it in, it made it out of the house, it made it to the Senate, and you didn't have to have much more than a five second conversation before people quickly endorsed this bill. You know, I didn't know Van as long or as well as many of the wonderful people here today, but it didn't take too long to grow an appreciation for his sense of humor, sense of community, and sense of purpose. And the relentlessness and persistence with which he pursued everything he pursued, every project, every issue, being an ambassador to the state of New Hampshire and for our arts and cultural community, and for his involvement, not just in our community, but in each and every one of our lives. Um, you know, when Van talked to you, it was like you're the only person on the planet. You didn't look past your shoulder or wasn't thinking about anything else. He was talking about you and looking at you and recognizing your value and in many cases bringing out the value in all of us. And it makes me think about that a uh, booklet he made for his students called No Stars where he talked about in a play there's no stars, there's a screenwriter, there's a marketer, there's the stage hands, there's people on the stage but everybody contributes. Everybody has value and today Van's the star he, he deserves to be the star. He's a star in all of our books. And every time we drive by this or come into this wonderful building, we'll remember Van. So thank you very much. I received two letters, one from, uh, <clears throat> from Senator Shaheen and one from Senator Hassan. This is from uh, Senator Shaheen. Dear friends, thank you so much for the invitation to join you for today's dedication of the Van McLeod Building. What a wonderful tribute to a man whose energy and enthusiasm for the arts enriched the lives of so many in the Granite State. As the longtime commissioner of the New Hampshire Department of Cultural Resources, Van understood the power of art and culture as a creative outlet capable of telling a compelling story this story, really our story, is the source of many lasting relationships to people and things in New Hampshire, most of which are forged in the heritage and history we share and deepened by what we can learn about ourselves and each other through our differences. In Van, we witnessed a master storyteller whose, whose deeds and kind words brought together so many in the Granite State. Today we dedicate a physical memorial to a devoted friend, to many and, and an individual and an invaluable public servant to the state of New Hampshire. But the living memorials to Van McLeod are all around us. The venues, galleries, and films he helped to create, and the support for the arts that he helped to garner, and most important, the countless artists he helped to inspire. Renaming this building is a fitting tribute to what will be the story of Van McLeod, alive for future generations to know and cherish. His legacy will live on in us. The many, of, many he encouraged to immerse themselves in the community of arts and culture. My best wishes to all for your future endeavors. Sincerely, Gene Shaheen, U.S. Senator. Uh, this is from uh, Senator Hassan. I regret, regret I'm unable to be with you today but I want to join you in honoring the life of Van McLeod and memorializing his unyielding service to our state by christening this building in his name. Van was a dedicated public servant, a tireless champion of the arts, and a pillar of our cultural and historic institutions. Thanks to Van's lifelong commitment and innumerable contributions to the culture in all its forms, our state is stronger, more vibrant, and more welcoming place. Under Van, better than anyone the impact that the arts can have on our people, our communities, and our economy. The Van McLeod Building is a fitting tribute to Van's legacy and will stand strong here for our state's capital, reminding every person 
of the value of our arts and culture and Van's effort to preserve both. It is a true testament to his strong values and selfless work to strengthen the community's economy and overall welfare of New Hampshire. Van continues to be missed de uh, dearly, but his spirit and memory live on in the Grand State because of the work that he did and the impact he had on people. He was an extraordinary man, friend, and a true Granite Stater. May his legacy stand as a strong, may his legacy stand as strong and proud as this building. With all good wishes, Margaret Woodhassen, State U.S. Senator. We at the Department of uh, Natural and Cultural Resources want to thank um, Governor Sununu and his staff for all of the work that they've done to make this, this happen. I'd now like to introduce Governor Sununu. Well, thank you. Um, not a whole lot I can add. I think Representative Shirtlift, Senator Feltis, um, I think a lot of us, look, we knew Van. We get it. The guy was incredible. I mean, just to put a, an exclamation point on it. Uh, I had, even though I've only been governor six months, I had the pleasure of really knowing Van over the past decade. Um, he, you've never met a guy with a smaller budget and a bigger heart, to be honest. <laughs> and and I, I make the joke sometimes, but um, but we do talk about cultural resources. Frankly, always kind of treated like the forgotten stepchild in government, right? It really was. You know, you always saw people kind of picking at the budget and, and not just casting it aside, but not really appreciating the value that I think we all know that this department and now combined department uh, with natural and cultural resources really brings to the table. But unlike most, he never complained. You know, he was always there just trying to explain the value they were bringing, what they were trying to do, where they thought they could go further with things, innovations that they wanted to try. Uh, and, and let me tell you, we're in Concord. You all know there's a lot of complaining, right? He never complained. He always really approached it with a smile. And above all else, and, and I can honestly say this, no offense to the other commissioners here, he really understood that a department and service of government was about the people, the people in the department. Um, I think people, the, the people he had the pleasure of serving with, I wouldn't say over and in charge of, but really with, I think that's how he saw himself, part of that team. Um, they got it too, and he, he kept that in, that inspiration, if you will, going, right? He kept making them believe in terms of what they were what they were not just trying to achieve, but what they were achieve, achieving and where they did have successes, and not let the bureaucracies of government drag them down, because it has a tendency to do that. But he was always above it. He was always above it every single time. Um, now he wasn't he, he didn't fall short of advocating. Lord knows. Uh, he used to remind me, you know, your father used to have double the budget when back in the '80s. <laughs> I know, Van, I know. I, at the time, I wasn't in charge of the budget, nothing I could do. But, um, but, you know, we do talk about the creative economy. That was one of his terms he used all the time, you know, reminding us that the cultural resources isn't just a thing that you have to have in the state. It's really what makes us so different in New Hampshire and what makes us part of that 603. And, uh, again, it was never done with, with uh, a complaint, always with, with pride. Um, and he, he, he would walk around. You wouldn't even know he was there sometimes. You know, he's, he was very humble about what he did. He just saw himself as part of the team. I see the, I love this photo, by the way. I was mentioning to Chelsea. I love this photo, the wispy hair, right? It looks great. That's an intimidating guy right there, right? <laughs> I think it's a great photo. But um, I, just, I always remember sometimes he could be right there and, and you wouldn't necessarily even know it and he waited patiently. And when he had his, you know, two minutes with the elected official, he made sure he got in the points exactly where they needed to be, and they were almost, they were indisputable every time. And you got it. He could really talk about it on a very plain level. So it's just an absolute honor to be here. Again, looking around, seeing the crowd, this is a, not an accident. He touched all of our lives. So it's an honor to be here and be able to, you know, just even if it's just the small gesture of naming um, such a, a building that had such an impact on his life, but really on all of our lives. We, we, don't, we don't see it like that sometimes, but it really does. What happens in these walls has a huge impact on the culture of our state. So it's just an absolute honor to be here and be able to um, kind of put the exclamation point um, on, again, a guy with, uh, may have had that, that tiny budget, but boy, he really wore it. He wore it right on his sleeve. He wore it with passion, he wore it with pride, and he really exemplified uh, what we talk about when we talk about 603 Pride. So um, with that, 
Let's make it. Let's make it happen, right? Let's make some laws. All right. So, do you guys, Chelsea and Joan, you want to join, join me up here? Senator, Representative, anyone else? So I've signed a lot of bills. Here, come on over. I've signed a lot of bills. We have specific dedication ceremonial pens. That is wonderful. Tell people they're over there with the lemonade cookies. Oh, they're over there with the lemonade and the cookies. So I guess these aren't the only two. No, no, those are the special. Those oh, these yeah, are the special. Are special. Oh, okay. These are special. Oh, okay. Great. Do we all get to tap one? Maybe? Okay, there's a couple over there. Um, all right. I know. And I always make this comment. I didn't realize signing a bill was so boring. It's a red folder, right? But they have their rules. I thought it was going to be like this glamorous thing when I started signing bills, and it's something as simple. Talk about the New Hampshire way, um, putting it in the red folder. With that, pull these out. like to finish up. Um, we're very pleased to have Joan Goshgarian and Chelsea McLeod with us. Um, Commissioner McLeod and I spent a lot of time together. Our offices were separated by a door. He would often poke his head in, usually he would actually just yell at me and ask if I wanted to go to lunch. Um, this was with the proviso, of course, that if he got a better offer, lunch was on my own. Uh, when we did go to lunch, uh, he would always exhibit tremendous pride in Chelsea and her accomplishments. And there were many of them. And I never met a father who was prouder or loved his daughter more than Van McLeod. Joan. It's truly really wonderful to be surrounded today by so many people who have been so supportive of my mother and I this past year. We thank you for that and for joining us today for this wonderful dedication to my dad. In his wildest dreams, I know that my dad could not have imagined such an honor. This building with his name on it, a bill sponsored and approved unanimously, unanimously by the New Hampshire legislator and signed today by Governor Sununu. Thank you so much. This is as official as it can be. I'm so proud of my dad. I think of him and miss him every day. I know that Van felt very fortunate to lead the Department of Cultural Resources and its four divisions. He had a fondness for all the staff, especially his division directors. Some evenings when Van would come home, he would announce that he wasn't really very hungry for dinner, which was a little unusual. And I would say, what, did you and Michael go to Arnie's again for burgers and shakes? <laughs> and he'd say, yes, but we had to meet and talk, so we had to go there. <laughs> like that justified the burger. Michael, you were his colleague and his buddy. Dan was always very happy when Beth invited him to a party at Historical Resources. He said they gave the best parties. One morning, one morning early in December, he was leaving the house with a Christmas tie on and say, he said he had been invited to the staff celebration for Christmas. He came home that night with a sock puppet on his hand. And of course, you know, Van, he walked in the house with a sock puppet. And he said, look what we made at the celebration today at the party. And it was like he was a kid coming home from a birthday party with a treat bag. So Beth, you kept him full of spirits. Matt, where's Matt? Matt, digital and uh, film, digital media and film Matt. You were the junior of the twosome, letting Van think that he was mentoring you. <laughs> when you're really the one who gave Van a run for his money. With your selfies, showing him how social media really works. And technology. He loved your stories of your young family and it sort of took him back to the days when he would probably have the same sh stories to share about a young, uh, a young child. And Ginny. 
So I remember it was Van and I were sitting with you at the finals of the Poetry Out Loud um, uh, finals and uh, contest, and Virginia Westcott, uh, Prescott, excuse me, was the official MC, and she asked Van to come up and to have his picture taken with and help present the awards to the, the winners and to the 10 people who were, the 10 high school students who were, who were getting to perform at that. And she called Van to come up and I turned to Ginny and she looked at me with a smile on her face and she said, sometimes it's important that Van is the one who's recognized. And it was so gracious and so nice. Um, all four of the division directors and the divisions made um, Van a very special life and he felt very blessed by having you in it. Van was really big on history, as you probably know, and dates and timelines were of particular interest. He liked to mark them with little trivia comments, like the morning he woke me up on a birthday and said, you've now been married to me longer than you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> or the time we were in Paris for our 15th wedding anniversary, and just as the Vivaldi concert was starting, he nudged me, he pointed at his watch, and he said, 15 years ago, exactly at this time, you were walking down the aisle toward me. And sure enough, he had accounted for the six hour time difference <laughs> and the additional 20 minutes that I left him standing there waiting for me to walk down the aisle. <laughs> An experience he called the most excruciating of his life, standing there by himself wondering if I was actually gonna walk down. <laughs> Marking the past and the present and things coming full circle were very meaningful to Van. Van was 15 when he lost his dad. And for as long as we lived in Concord, have lived in Concord, I don't think a year ever went by that he didn't remember the date and visit his father on that date. His father died on an election day, which made it a double marking. The actual date of the death of his dad and the election date itself. So November's were a twofer. He got to do two. When Chelsea turned 18 and was able to vote for the first time, we three left the house and went and voted together and then went to Blossom Hill Cemetery to pay homage to his dad. Van thought it was very important that his dad knew that his granddaughter had voted, but I really think that it was just as important or more important to Van to be able to mark the day in that way. And not all the dates to Van were of particular seriousness. Um, April Fool's Day became quite a national holiday at our house. Ever since the year Chelsea turned six and wanted to get her dad. We devised the old sugar salt switch for his coffee. And Van was a person who put two teaspoons of, of sugar in his coffee, so believe me, he noticed that it wasn't sugar. But the funniest part of it was that what, and what made it so memorable is that he fell for it. Like seriously, he didn't realize this was his daughter. <laughs> and after that, it was war. Planning started weeks in advance. He'd say, remember she got me good that first time, can't happen again. Um, and that's what it always came back to was the first time, what created the, tradi the tradition, what made it worth marking. Van had an outsized personality, a wonderful sense of humor, and a passion for all things history and culture. In fact, it was his love of theater that gave him a love of history. He said he couldn't effectively direct cabaret without knowing about Germany and the rise of the Nazis, or direct Man of La Mancha without knowing about the Spanish Inquisition, or even The Crucible without recognizing that it was about the, it was a metaphor for the um, Senator Joe McCar U.S. Senator Joe McCarthy's witch hunt on communists. So, this ability and interest of his combining the two and understanding is really what I think he brought to his work and the departments. Um, the connection and the importance of things present, past, and future. This work that happened here in this building and the, I guess, DCR North, I'd call it now, um, had a direct and impactful uh, position with the people of New Hampshire and its landscape. Um, the respect was earned, was earned by Van, but not only Van. It was, it was the entire department, the entire divisions, that, and everybody who worked there that helped create that. So I would like to say that everybody has a part of that. So we never really know what the years ahead will bring us, but I hope that this building, the Van McLeod building, will always be the place where past, present, and future, connections sometimes of seemingly, seemingly dif disparate ideas, 
and culture and humanity are respected, nurtured, and intersect. So Van, we have one for you on this day, the first anniversary of the day that you died. Edified and soon to be etched in stone, you are now forever marked in your earliest home. We knew the day, who knew the day that you were born here? A preemie because you couldn't wait to get started. 71 years later, you would be welcomed back to, the first, to your first and forever home, the ending of your full life linked back to your beginning. On behalf of Van, Chelsea and I again, thank you for this honor and thank you so much for being with us on this day. Thank you very much for coming today uh, to help us with this very important task. Thank you.